from stories across the globe to stories here at home. This is the National News Broadcast. A very good evening to you. I'm Charita Thai. A very good evening indeed. I'm Charita Minipurarachi. And let's move on to the headlines for tonight's news. Travel restrictions will be relaxed from tomorrow morning. Interprovincial travel restrictions will be in place until 31st. 51 trains will be operated daily island-wide from tomorrow. Minister Janakathen Nakon requests a police investigation into the opposition allegation that vegetables were wasted. 81,600 have been given COVID vaccines yesterday. The impact of cyclone producers. Less rains are expected. A steel bridge constructed within a day for the Mapalagama Song Bridge. We move on to those and other stories in detail now. Travel restrictions imposed island-wide at present will be removed at 4 a.m. tomorrow. Accordingly, permission will be given to leave homes for an essential activity based on the last digit of the National Identity Card. Travel restrictions imposed between provinces are effective until the 31st. Travel restrictions imposed island-wide at 11 p.m. from the 13th according to instructions given by the health authorities to control the spread of COVID pandemic. However, essential services were conducted without obstacles. Police media spokesman DIG Ajit Rohan has said that a person can use the driving license or passport if he is not in possession of the national identity card. Foreign nationals can use their passport. Public and private sector employees hiring vehicle drivers, daily traders and factory workers can perform their duties as usual from tomorrow. Workshops and conferences have been banned. People in isolated areas cannot leave those areas. Outside persons cannot enter enter the isolated areas. If a person has been called for vaccination, the national identity card methodology is not relevant. ಸಂಪೂರ್ಣ ಪ್ರದೇಶಿಯಾಗಿ State Minister Dr. Sudarshini Fernandipul has requested to act according to health recommendations issued by the Director General of Health Services. Sri Lanka Transport Board says that although travel restrictions are removed from tomorrow morning, interprovincial buses will be operated only for groups engaged in essential services. Steps have been taken to operate 3,000 buses at provincial level. The railway department says that 51 train journeys will be operated from tomorrow. Although five trains will be operated between provinces, only private and public sector employees engaged in essential services can travel in them. People will be able to leave their homes from tomorrow based on the last digit of their national identity card. Minister Bandra Kunawardana inspected wholesale markets today in 4th and 5th streets of Colombo. The Army Rapid Deployment Motorcycle Squad has been deployed to support police to look into the persons who are violating travel restrictions on the instructions of Army Commander General Shavindra Silva. Police have arrested six persons who were engaged in betting yesterday. The Nelua police have conducted a raid following a tip-off. A group of people who were engaged in playing an illegal game at Valampitia has fled with the arrival of public health inspectors leaving their cash. A group of children who were flying kites violating travel restrictions was recorded in the camera. Our reporter said that certain groups in the upcountry were seen violating travel restrictions. Steps have been taken to disinfect towns before people arrive in cities for essential activities with the removal of travel restrictions tomorrow morning.
And meanwhile, Minister Janaka Bandaratin Nakon has requested the Inspector General of Police to conduct an inquiry into the allegation of the opposition that 2.6 million kilograms of vegetables were wasted. During a media briefing today, he said the opposition allegation is an attempt to embarrass the government. Minister Janaka Bandaratin Nakon said that MP Rohini Karavi Kaviratna has mentioned to media on the 14th that vegetables worth 2.7 million rupees about were rotten at the Dambulla Economic Centre. Minister Tennekon said that he, along with MP Pramita Bandar Tennekon and Divisional Secretary, were inside the Economic Centre making arrangements to purchase the vegetables. He said that the parliamentarian in Kaviratna was in an Colombo and did not know anything about it. He said that he would be able to write to Minister Sarat Sekara and to IGP to conduct an inquiry into this matter. Meanwhile, our reporters said the trading was conducted successfully today at Kepadipola Special Economic Center. Traders have arrived from the regions and all trading has been conducted according to health guidelines. In the meantime, the second dose of the COVID Shield vaccine and the first dose of Sinopharm vaccine are being given at present. The epidemiology unit said that 81,550 were vaccinated yesterday. The second dose of the COVID Shield vaccine was given to 12,558 yesterday. The second dose of the vaccine has been given to a total of 265,465. The first dose of Sinopharm vaccine has been given to 68,992 people yesterday. A total of 348,619 have been given the Sinopharm vaccine. A special discussion headed by Minister Pavitra Vanyarachi was held yesterday at Health Ministry on streamlining the vaccination program. Sinopharm vaccine was given to about 1,000 people living around Horana town today. People in Parnadura, Palimula and Gorakapala Gramaniladara divisions were given Sinopharm vaccines today. The first dose of Sinopharm vaccine was given to people in Upper Bope and Lower Bope Gramaniladara divisions under the Paduka Medical Officers area. People in Vaskadwa South Gramaniladara division were given Sinopharm vaccine yesterday. People in Ravatavatta West Gramaniladara division were given Sinopharm vaccine at Saisapura Community Hall. People in Dompe Medical Officers area were given Sinopharm vaccines today. A total of 1,732 COVID-19 patients are detected today. 1,102 fully recovered patients have left the hospitals today. Accordingly, the total recoveries in the country has increased up to 118,322. A total of 22,940 COVID-19 patients are still receiving treatments in hospitals. 20 COVID-19 deaths were reported yesterday from Panvila, Kalania, Bulat Singhala, Gonapala, Gampa, Kalavana, Polan Narua, Ambatana, Kundasale, Kalutara North, Polan Narua, Navattarua, Maggona, Kalambu 13, Ruanvala, Vaunia, Kalambu 14, Nabuda, Diatalava and Pasara areas. The Tourism Development Authority says that foreign tourists who have arrived in the country can travel in a bio-bubble method. Director General of the Authority, Dambika Vijay Singh, has said that the Director General of Health Services and IGP have been informed in this regard. Accordingly, foreign tourists can travel between provinces in the bio-bubble. Institutions and persons who have brought down tourists have been instructed to follow proper health guidelines when transporting tourists. Legal action will be taken against the persons who do not follow instructions. The pilot project to treat patients who do not show symptoms after being infected with coronavirus while staying at home will be implemented tomorrow from the Colombo district. Puttalam District Health Services Director Dinusha Fernando says that 29 staff members of the Maravilla Base Hospital have been infected with COVID-19. Accordingly, admitting of new patients to Maravilla Base Hospital has been temporarily suspended and some wards have been closed. An intermediate treatment centre with 350 beds have been set up at Kirinochi, Murukandi area to treat COVID-19 patients. Kirinochi Security Forces Commander Major General Harendra Rana Singh made an inspection tour of the place. Meanwhile, additional facilities have been added to Ambalangoda, Batapula Government Hospital as a COVID-19 treatment centre.
and the chief epidemiologist Dr. Sudat Samaravira says that the public should continue to adhere to health guidelines in an effort to control and curb the spread of the outbreak despite the island-wide vaccination program and he also said that foreign researchers have suggested that the number of cases in the country expected to decline following the vaccination process. He made these remarks while speaking to the media today. As a weapon against COVID-19 that we have launched the vaccination program in our country, that we have started with this Covishield vaccine and now we are using Sinopharm and Sputnik V. And along with this, that yesterday also the vaccination program was implemented in the Western province with the second dose of the Covishield and also the first dose of Sinopharm. Research in the other countries has shown that after giving the vaccine, after about five weeks time that there will be a the decrease in the case load and also the deaths and also the people that who are admitted into the hospitals. So we will expect that the same thing will happen in our country but that is not the only solution for this COVID-19 control and it will not itself will be beneficial if the people are not maintaining their healthy precautions throughout. This includes that if somebody is having symptoms and signs of COVID-19, they should seek medical attention promptly and get tested themselves and if they are affected and they should uh, act on the medical advice. At the moment, the, we identify COVID-19 patients by PCR testing and rapid antigen testing. With this, the PCR testing is not just a simple test, it is a mm -hmm. process. There will be a longer time taken for the PCR testing, maybe 6 to 12 hours maybe even more, one day or two days. During the past days, we have reported increased number of cases because of that the need for PCR testing also increased. With that, our laboratories has come to the maximum of its capacity and because of that, these laboratories were running throughout day and night. With these efforts, the laboratories are issuing results as early as possible. But because of this large number of testing, there will be uh, some delays. But because our laboratories are now working tirelessly throughout the day, we hope that this delay will be rectified very soon. We will be receiving the results in a reasonable time period. And also the people should stay at home as much as possible, not come into the society all the time. And also when they are coming to the society, should maintain their hand hygiene and also should wear a face mask properly and should maintain the physical distance. We do all these things as a nation. If we adhere to these guidelines, we hope that COVID-19 infection will be under control and we will be able to resume our day-to-day -day activities and also our children's education and our economic drive, everything will be back to normal very soon. The program to provide 10,000 beds within 10 days to treat COVID patients is implemented at several places. Minister Namal Rajapaksha is leading the efforts and various organizations have come forward to assist in the preparation of beds. Youth at Ampara District National Youth Services Council Vocational Training Center are engaged in preparing beds. Minister Namal Rajapaksha inspected the place today. The beds are being prepared at four places in the district and they are scheduled to prepare 200 beds for COVID patients. Meanwhile, Minister Namal Rajapaksha also joined to look into the facilities at the COVID-19 Women's Hospital maintained under the Ampara Hadi High Educational Institute. Minister Nama Rajapaksha said that two wards with 100 beds at Belia, the DA Rajapaksha District Ayurvedic Hospital will be allocated for COVID patients. The Army is making necessary development activities at the hospital. National Youth Brigade is preparing 800 beds for the temporary hospitals that is being built in Higuragoda Special Coronavirus Treatment Center. Polanarwa District Development Committee Chairman MP Amar Kirti Korola and a group of people inspected its activities yesterday. In the meantime, the Med Department says that Tawute Cyclone, which was near Arabian Sea around 2.30 a.m. today, would further develop and move 
towards northwestern direction. It will move across Gujarat coastal belt of India on the 18th. With that, the rainy weather condition over the island is expected to decrease. However, the Met Department has requested fishing and naval communities to refrain from their activities in southeastern, eastern and central Arabian Sea areas. A large number of paddy fields at Nagoda Utagama, Unanvitia and Yatalavata in the Gol district have submerged due to heavy rains. Rocks have fallen into Kottala Bay Road due to heavy rains at Hangurankat area obstructing transport. The water level of Gingaga has increased at Badegama area. Udugama Badegama and Dodangoda Badegama roads were underwater. Manar Sea area has become rough due to high winds. The wind speed in the sea area to put them from Kankisanture via Manar could increase 60 km per hour and the wind speed to Hambantore to put them to Kalambu via Gol could increase up to 50 km per hour. Two persons have died when an earth mound collapsed on a house at Varakapala Gasnava area. An 83-year-old mother and her 55-year-old son have died in the incident. One of the five sluice gates of Udavalva Reservoir were opened last night. The Mahavali Authority project manager Osman De Silva said that they have to open the remaining four sluice gates if rains continue. An individual is recorded with a mobile telephone, a bridge at Kimbulavala area on Pitigala and Mapalagama Road collapsing due to strong currents. The Road Development Authority officials have taken steps to build a temporary steel bridge as a solution to transport issues. An accelerated program has been launched to provide relief to the people affected by floods in the Gampha district. 7,408 families have been affected in the district. One death has been reported and 199 houses have been damaged. The highest number of families affected are living at Biagama Electoral Division. Minister Prasanna Ranathunga has instructed officials to provide compensations for the families whose houses have been damaged. He said that the government has paid special attention to prevent low-lying areas in the district being submerged. The Navy has deployed 15 teams for rescue operations and, the, and to provide relief for the people affected by floods in Gampa, Kalutar, Gaul and Mathura districts. Two sluice gates of Rajangani Reservoir have been opened by two feet each. And meanwhile, People's Bank has introduced Sarabhumi loan scheme to support the government's program to create a country without toxins. It aims to encourage production of fertilizer, pesticides and herbicides locally. The loan will have a maximum repayment period of 10 years on investment with concessionary interest rate and a maximum repayment period of 3 years on recurrent expenditure. Fertilizer producers have to obtain a certificate from the National Fertilizer Secretariat to qualify for Sarbuhumi loans and pesticides and herbicides producers should get a permit from pesticide registrar's office at the Agricultural Department. Fertilizer producers should have the technical expertise on the subject. The project submit should be locally and economically financially feasible. It is compulsory to sign an agreement with the government to purchase the fertilizer. The People's Bank has taken steps to provide a loan through any of their 741 branch network in the country. Further information can be obtained calling over the telephone number 0112-481-356. Minister Sarath Virasekar says that he has requested a report on the investigations in connection with the Easter Sunday attacks from the CID. Minister Sarath Virasekar said that the Attorney General has informed certain evidence is not sufficient. A report from CID has been requested in that regard. The minister said according to his knowledge, subtract files were sent to the Attorney General a few months ago. Officials of the CID were working with the Attorney General's officials to file indictments on 32 persons. When the Attorney General was asked a few months ago, he said apart from subtract files, he was waiting for the report of the Presidential Commission. It has been time that report had come. Therefore, the minister said he asked whether the Attorney General is stating about the certain evidence or about some suspects.
Welcome back with the sports update. And Sri Lanka cricket team left for Bangladesh this morning to take part in three one-day international matches. The new leadership is entrusted with directing the Sri Lankan team with young players. Kusal Janit Pereira is the captain of the team, while Kusal Mendes is a vice captain. Sanjeev Virakun has been appointed as a spin ball trainer of the team for the series. And with that, we conclude tonight's news. Do it tomorrow at the very same time. Stay safe. Good night. Good night.